Good morning, world. Today's Money Monday. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. I have a quote for you this morning. If you don't save money, money won't save you. The author of that is Alvin Darian, our host of the Daily Huddle on Money Mondays. So off we go, folks. We've got a great guest for you today. And you're... Good morning, good morning, good morning. Our host, Alvin Darian, is here. Alvin, can you speak? Probably not, but I want to acknowledge you. And uh, today's conversation, gang, is this. What happens when someone shifts their relationship with money? What happens when someone shifts their relationship with money? There's such a thing as your relationship with money. And here on the Daily Huddle, we say that your relationship with money gives you what money does for you, what money doesn't do for you, how you perceive money, and whether or not wealth is the kind of game you're playing. So a whole bunch more about that. But before we jump into introducing our amazing guest this morning, Mr. Andre Parker, I've got a couple of questions for you. Yes, sir. Mr. Stan Anderson, what time is it and who will you be hugging today? Well, Sorrel, the time is now, the only time that there is. And I'm going to hug my, I'm going to hug some trees today. I already hugged one when I ran this morning. (laughs) That's awesome, man. You'll literally be a tree hugger. (laughs) (laughs) Gio, can you say something? Always. Always. You are here. Just want to make sure. Gio, where are you and what are you grateful for, my friend? Okay, let me look. I look, I look, I look. I seem to be here. I am here. And what am I grateful for today? Today, I am grateful for roofs. I'm grateful for roofs. Did you say roofs? Yeah, you know, like roofs over your house. I'm grateful. Yeah. (laughs) A roof over your head. (laughs) That's a handy little thing, especially when it's raining. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you. And there was one question over here that we're really fond of. And that question is, how are you? And the answer to that is, I am the way I say I am. And I'm going to pause for a moment. Whether you're watching us on Facebook, whether you're on the left or the east or the top or down coast, you get to say how your life goes. Because you are the way you say you are. And today, I am grateful. I'm grateful for the daily huddle, grateful for this conversation, and grateful for you who are listening for this conversation. Now, I'm gonna say a little bit about Andre Parker and uh, that's just, there are no words that I can say that can fully introduce Andre Parker as the commitment that he is to the world and to wealth building as a way of creating freedom for people. Andre Parker is a financial professional who's committed to that conversation and committed to assisting not just his clients, but you who are listening right now, committed to assisting you in transforming your relationship to money because your relationship to money gives you the life you live. We're fond of saying here, the way you start the day gives you the rest of your day and the way you live your day gives you the rest of your life. Well, your relationship with money now Today gives you your relationship with money for the rest of the day. And your relationship with money today will give you your relationship with money for the rest of your life. And Andre Parker is here to create with us 
a brand new relationship with money. Andre, good morning. Yes. It is so good to have you back on The Daily Huddle. Thank you so much, man. I'm always excited to be with you guys. So much, so much to learn in life, so much to share. So I thank you for having me. Um, I'm hoping that the message that I have today will not only touch you in your conscious mind, but hopefully it seeps down into your subconscious program so you can really understand the important thing about your relationship with money. So just to give you guys a little background about me, I grew up to a single mom, low income housing in the projects, and we did not know about money. My relationship with, with money was horrible. And even so, when I started my first business at 22 years old, I had a brick and mortar business in 95. So I guess I'm showing my age. Uh, I did very well with sales. It, sales doesn't equate a successful business because I was out of business in two years because of my relationship with money. Fast forward, you get married, have kids, um, you know, everybody who knows about relationships, uh, money actually affects your intimate relationships as well. So this is why I'm so passionate about teaching what I'm about to teach you guys today. So if you don't mind, I would like to go ahead and just get started so we can have more of a conversation. Well, jump right into it and somewhere around 920, we'll stop and uh, we'll engage the public in that conversation. So go ahead and begin sharing. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. Um, start at the beginning. So in case you guys want to follow me on social media, that's where I'm at. Um, hold on. Here we go. I love technology. So the question I have for you guys is, is it money or is it your relationship with money that's really causing you financial stress? And I want you guys to really think about that because you can have a lot of money at one time, you can have a, a little bit of money at another time. And either way, it's really your relationship with money. So today, I'm going to dive into two aspects of your relationship with money, and that's your money IQ and your money EQ. And you'll find out which is more important as I go through the presentation. So money EQ. Money EQ is something we never was taught as, uh, as a country or as a world. Money EQ is your money emotional intelligence. It's your, um, your money program really operating at a subconscious level. And people say, well, well, what does that really mean? It's your environment that you grew up in that gave you your financial DNA or your principles of how money should work, which is very bad because a lot of people have this thing that says, well, if the rich keeps getting rich and the poor keeps staying poor, it's really dealing with the environment and cultural backgrounds and socioeconomic backgrounds of their program that they were introduced to when they were small. So in order for your money EQ to change, you got to change it from the subconscious level. Now, money IQ is beautiful because that's what we teach as financial professionals. And this is dealing with like the seven money milestones, you know, things as far as your, your uh, cash flow management, debt management, emergency fund, uh, building wealth, all those things are very important. But if you don't get your IQ, your EQ right, your IQ won't even matter. And you'll see as I go through the presentation. So I'm going to ask you guys out there a question. What does money really mean to you guys? I want you to just sit and think about it because money is just physical pieces of paper or metal that's, you know, that everyone has, right? So people have some money with faces on it. People have some, you know, different faces on it, but the difference is the meaning behind each person. So I love this picture right here. The person with the money that's smiling, then you got the person who's angry or upset. Now, which one are you? When you receive money, are you the person that's smiling or are you the person that's frowning? And you're probably saying, well, when I get money, I'm happy. That's not always necessarily true. I want you guys to, to take a look at this next slide, which is dealing with happy money or unhappy money. See, happy money is doing what you love in life, making people happy and receiving money, spending money with a smile and not with a grudge or, or gratitude. Now, this even goes for business owners who have to pay taxes. <laughs> you have to be grateful or show gratitude, even spending money, giving it to Uncle Sam. That's what we call happy money. Doing things that you love to receive money and spending money as well. 
unhappy money is doing things that you really don't like, um, you know, or you're taking advantage of people to make money, to receive money. You're always frustrated about money and you hate to spend it. You're holding on to it. Or, and this goes for, you know, I, I meet with people all the time and they hate their business or they hate their job, but they keep receiving money. That's unhappy money. So if your money can make a face, which one is it actually making? Is it making the face of a smile or is it making the face of a frown? You know, so the best money that you can make in life is happy money, whether you're making it or spending it. Now, the quality of your life will determine this. Yeah, right. You always hear this all the time. Your money and your life is really a direct reflection of your beliefs about money. It's all about the story. You know, when you hear money or when you think about money, what story plays in your head? Because if you break it down, it's your subconscious beliefs that will determine your behaviors in life. And this is why money EQ is most important. So think about it. The stories that you tell, though, it's hard to make money. Oh, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to, 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 you know, to keep money. All these stories that you have. See, this is important because, we, you know, everybody out there, we're controlled by money in some degree. Being controlled from making decisions from which job should I uh, go for, which business should I open, or which business transaction should I choose, something that we want to buy, places we want to go, restaurants, all the way down to giving God money, paying tithes. All that stuff is important. So if money affects us daily, and this is the daily huddle, if money affects us daily like this, wouldn't it be great to get the money energy uh, balanced in our lives? I'm telling you right now, if you can focus on shifting that energy and, and when it comes to your money EQ, you're going to have a happier life when it comes to finances. Because a lot of people think they need more money, but they don't even appreciate the money that they're making now. So why would you even appreciate making more money? So the quality of your life will be determined by the beliefs and your story around money. Now, this is the only reason. These three reasons right here, you can find this on why, you, why, you, why do you need money, right? It's for a function of exchange. We use money to exchange for something else. You know, we get money, we buy a car, we get money, we, you know, buy clothes, we buy a house. So you can almost use money for the exchanges of almost anything. Now, you can't get everything with money. So, you know, even though you might have a lot of money, there's certain things and certain principles that people will subscribe to that you just can't exchange for money. And then you have the second function of money, which is saving. You know, people want to hold on to their money because, you know, it preserves the value of it. And they also somehow intrinsically equate the more money that I have, the more self-worth I have, which is really a, a falsehood in believing that because the money that you have does never, your net worth never equates to your self-worth. If that was the case, then there wouldn't be any Warren Buffett's of the world or Elon Musk because they knew their self-worth was greater than their net worth even when they were starting off. So you got to remember that the function of saving, people want to save so it can kind of preserve their own self-worth, but you got to be very careful with that. And then the third function, of course, you know, when people come to us, hey, I want to grow my money. What's the best investment? You know, this is the core of capitalism. If you deposit money, you want it to invest and you want it to generate interest. You want to make more money. So these are the only three functions of money. And somewhere along the line with these three functions, there's a lot of energy, positive or negative, that you're going to have to fix and balance if you want to have a good life when it comes to money. Now, what money type are you? There's three money types, and you're going to find out which one you are. Now, I want you guys to know out there that it doesn't mean that it's a bad money type. It just means that you need to be aware of what type of money type you have so you can have better relationships when it comes to money. So the first type is the controlling type. Now, these are people who want to take control of their environment. They want to control their feelings. We like money, so it provides a feeling for us. Now, the controlling type is the person who might be a spender. 
a spender typically grew up in a poor environment and when they spend money, they, they feel worthy. Like, ah, oh, you know, I have money now, so let me spend it all the time because I feel like I'm worth something. Then you got people who, who save money. That gives them a sense of security, you know? So it's always going to be based upon a feeling. And then you have the money maker, right? The money maker is the business owner, the person who is a workaholic or they just love to do business. They love to make money. And, and the reason why these are controlling types is because if they can control any one of these functions of saving, spending, or making more money, then they feel like their life is a, a whole lot better, a, a whole lot, you could move a whole lot further in life. So the controlling type are, are those that I just mentioned. And then, of course, you have the indifferent type. Now, <laughs> you see the picture of the person right here, the, the type of person, uh, greed, they take, they're take not greedy, they don't like to take advantage of people. These are typically your school teachers, your professors, uh, people who are in a serving profession. They're not wealthy, but they're not worried about money. They, they focus on academics, but this is the key. If you're indifferent with money, you you shift that and change that when money issues arise. So you have to be very careful. They don't stay indifferent when a crisis comes. So you got to be very careful of being indifferent, saying, I don't really care about money. Um, you have to understand that when a crisis comes, that's when your indifference change. And then, of course, the third type is the fear type. People who fear money, they're always running away from money. You know, money can be dangerous. These are people who feel guilty about having money. They feel shame. They're embarrassed about money. They run away from money. They can't make money. They can't save money. They can't, they don't spend money. They're constantly feeling bad about money. So whichever fear type, whichever type you are, you have to make sure that you understand it. See, self-awareness is going to be the most important key. Once you understand your money type, then you can kind of understand why you've been suffering with the relationship of money. Now, this is important. When it comes to your relationship with money, it's going to affect your intimate relationships. And the reason why you have to know your money type is because when you get into a relationship, you have sometimes a saver who marries a spender and it causes problems. And the reason why you must understand your own type is because you learn to appreciate the, your, your partner's type. And you have to be candid when it comes to your money type and have money talks in your relationship. And of course, when it comes to your family relationships, these are the cultural wounds that probably need to be healed, especially if you grew up poor. There's a lot of family relationships that are destroyed because, you know, money was always an issue in your family or if you come from poverty. Now, the reason why you need to understand this is because there's a lot of reprogramming of your financial DNA that has to happen in this case. And business relationships are just as important because if you have business partners and you know you hear it all the time, like, hey, I just had to get rid of my partner because they're always spending money and we need to grow the business. So the whole purpose of this is so you can understand and have compassion. And maybe once you understand your own money type and you understand your partner's money type, you can help them and guide them and navigate them to a, a better understanding of what the total purpose is for you know, your, yourself in that relationship with the other person. Now, as we close out, I want you guys to know, no matter where you're at with money, you have to learn how to appreciate it. And these are five tips that I wanna give you guys. You gotta be present. Only in the present moment can you really change your life. You know, the time is what? The time is now. So no matter what you did in the past, be present, be focused on where you're at and where you wanna go. Start appreciating what you have in life. No negative or positive, just appreciate what you have. You know, a lot of people say, you know, if I get, if I make a hundred thousand more, I'll be happy. Never works. So <laughs> another thing is stop complaining. If you start complaining, you lose your power to change your life. Focus on something else. Because remember, appreciation overrides complaints. And this is one of my favorite sayings, what you appreciate will appreciate. So remember that. Listen to your intuition. You know, you, you know everything that you need to know inside. So what does your heart say when it comes to money and, and things like that? And always remember this, let go of the outcome. There's so many variables in life where you can't control the outcome, but what you can control is the work that you do within the process when it comes to money. So let go of the attachment of things 
and just find joy in going through the process and making your money life a, a better life. So those are my tips when it comes to money. Hope you guys got something out of that. And just you got to just remember this. Money EQ is way more important than money IQ because that's dealing with the emotions of money. Let's see. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So, uh, Andre, I, I just I just love what uh, you, you've shared with us today. Let's stop the sharing for a moment. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. And uh, let's get everybody together. Let's get everybody together. I like that. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Andre, the, the thing is money EQ is critical. Right. Without money EQ, IQ doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It and really doesn't. I, I, I just love the fact that you created that with us. You said that uh, what you, if you appreciate money, it will appreciate you. That kind of brought it back to uh, the, the, the first quote, right. if you don't save money, money, money won't, won't save you. you. Yeah. If you don't appreciate money, money won't appreciate you either. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, tell us a little bit about the relationship you had with money coming from the background you came from. Oh, wow. And, and, yeah. and one of the things you said is that when you realize your money type, right, it's not like you're going to fight and change your money type. Right. What's really critical is the awareness. Right. You know what your money type is so you can transform your relationship with money and have money work for you. So tell us a little bit about what did you struggle with? How do you currently manage being you with your money type? So what's your money type? It's, I took the money test and it's, it's, <laughs> this is funny, the money maker. I've been an entrepreneur since 22. So I've always grown up poor. Um, I started working at 13 and I worked so much to make money. I wanted to control the environment because the way we grew up was to me, it was like, oh man, there has to be a better way. So of course the, the, the subliminal message was you got to work hard for money. You got to work hard for money. So I'm like, I get a job, I'm working. There was a time when I was working 80 hours a week. So I was the, the controlling type was the money maker. And then I was like, there has to be a better way to make money. So I'll get into business. I get into business. I work really hard, but I had so much anxiety over money and it almost destroyed. I've been married for 21 years this year. It almost destroyed my marriage and my family because I was so controlled. My emotions was always anxious and anxiety. So when I realized my money type, when I went on this journey of discovering like, why am I working so hard? And I'm going to tell you, if you're working too hard to manifest anything in life, guess what? That means that you don't have a subconscious program to actually manifest that. Because think about it, like we learn about money consciously. We learn about anything consciously, but our lives are ran 95% of our lives are ran through the subconscious program. And where do we get that program from? Our environment, especially the first seven years of your life. So I was like, uh, side note, I did it uh, fifth graders. I did a how money works for fifth graders. And I looked at most of those kids in there and I heard some of their, their words with money. And I'm like, that's their parents. They were talking about bills and money is corruption. I'm like, where do these kids get this from? where we all get it from, our, our environment, our parents, our peers. So yeah, so I had to really, and this is why this is most important to me because even dealing with clients was like, I have a million dollars, is that enough? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's dive deeper into that because there's people who say, I won't feel wealthy until I have a private jet plane. So you understand that it's not the amount of money that you have, that's why money EQ is so important. You know, yeah. all the money. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. I want you, everybody to think about it. Like if you want money for freedom, money can never buy you freedom because if you're never free in your mind, no amount of money in the world will, will give you that freedom. That's why it's important to have some balance with money. Like, you know, like appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ronald's got a question or a comment for you. Ronald, go ahead. Hey, good to see you, Andre Parker. Was, How you doing? I think that's your second time here, isn't it? Yeah, it is the second, second time. time. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate. I was like, hey, they must like me a little bit. They they brought yeah. me back. <laughs> so I, I took some notes, and and uh, this is really interesting. One thing I was looking at, okay, the money EQ, uh, the function of money, and I'm placing myself in each one of these categories, the money type. Then when you drop to the appreciation for money, I want you to talk about, listen to your intuition. Right. And, and also the money EQ, because I'm taking these to connect because mm -hmm. your emotional, I mean, I don't want to dwell too much on it. Let you speak on that. But, you know, my intuition really is tied to my, to my EQ. So what's your take on when you say to listen to your intuition right? Uh, and even let, let go of the outcome? So what's your, what do you, give me, you know, some kind of tangible example of that. Okay, yeah. perfect. So and here's, here's the challenge with that, your intuition, right? Um, that's your higher senses. Um, the challenge that we have, and that's why it's important to rewrite the program, because We've heard people say, trust your gut. Mm -hmm. But if your gut is programmed with uh, bad money, uh, bad money EQ, then it's hard to trust that. So the, the biggest thing that I could give everyone out there is one word, self-awareness. Be aware and be curious of how you're thinking about money and how you're feeling about money. See, emotion, uh, money EQ is emotional intelligence. We cannot be emotionally intelligent until we become emotionally literate. What, what I mean by that is what is emotions? It's energy and motion. And that's something that you feel in the body. So when you think about money, right, or if you have these thoughts and this, these, in this intuition or gut feeling, and it gives you and a feeling arises, well, that's going to, you can locate that because if you have fear, it's located in the gut area, right? You know, you're afraid, or if you feel sad, where, where is sadness located? It's usually in, in the eyes, face, you know, heart area, uh, anger, you know, you feel angry because like, oh, I had all this money and I lost it. Well, you know, that's so all, you can locate that feeling in your body. So become aware of when you think about money or you find yourself in a situation, be curious of how do I feel? Because a lot of times, uh, honestly, Ronald, it's subconscious thoughts and they come up. But the beautiful thing about thoughts, whether they're conscious or subconscious, they'll provide you with um, an indication of how you feel. Locate that feeling in the body. So the biggest thing you have, the biggest advantage any one of us have is being curious and being open to the way we feel, paying attention to your body when it comes to money. Uh, that's going to help you discover like, wow, I really have some money issues. I, I don't trust money because most of us actually don't trust money. We believe that you know, money's not going to come back to us when we spend it all. So the biggest thing you have is being curious. Self-awareness is your superpower. No matter what you believe in, no matter where you are, because it's going to open you up to being curious. And, and what I mean by this is look at the patterns in your life. Go back. And that's what I had to do. I had, I had a lot of self-work to do. <laughs> Just FYI, we, we all do, but some of us, our egos are saying, no, I don't need any help. But a lot of self uh, work that you have to do and look at the themes of how you reacted with money when you had it, how, when you lost it. Just look at the themes of your life. And now you say, OK, well, what am I missing here? What do I need to learn? So that, that's the biggest thing. Your intuition has to be your beliefs have to be upgraded. Right. Got it. No matter what you're making a uh, hundred thousand a year, you want to make a million a year. Uh, and I'm constantly upgrading my beliefs. A lot of times just I want you guys to think about this habits. Right. Habits are they say it's hard to break. There's other ways that you can you can kind of break habits. But the reason why is because walking is a habit. If they were easily you know, rewritten. <laughs> imagine that your subconscious controls like your heart beating and everything if habits were easily rewritten and there's energy psychology that you can use to kind of rewrite subconscious programs as long as it's okay to do but you have to be able to upgrade your beliefs and it's really hard for us because we're always thinking and just think about it. you're thinking about money 
So what happens when you go inside here, your subconscious says, okay, they're thinking, so let me run the program, which is not mm -hmm. 95% of your life is ran with the subconscious. That's why, you know, I, we can, I know we have to, hey, Andre, we, I, can, I, we can, I, we can talk I, about this all day. You, you could do this all day long. Couldn't you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Sometimes I, I get sidetracked with, with clients. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, okay, should I go into, um, money coach or should I go into <laughs> and some energy psychology here but either way honestly the way that I am uh, a lot of my clients say um, I care I care more about your well-being um, and money is just you know th that's the easy part I can the financial planning is the, that's the easy part the hard part is oh you're 50 years old and you've been running this program for for <laughs> for 45 years okay all right. Well, maybe maybe fifty years. <laughs> maybe fifty years. Right, right. So yeah, I'm yeah I'm, I apologize, but hopefully Ronald, you know, you, you got that, and you know, this conversation needs to happen more because we're bringing awareness to the daily huddle community on things like this. Um, yeah. Well, Andre, you're definitely coming back, man. One of the comments in the chat is loved it today. Andre Thank is you. a rock star. Oh, I appreciate uh, it. Well, take take two seconds, Andre. If you were to say one last comment today, what would you choose to say? I would say this. No matter where you're at, learn how to forgive yourself for all the mistakes that you made. Because in order for you to upgrade your money EQ, you're going to have to use that energy to move forward. Forgive yourself. Move on and know that you have the power. Yes, everyone up here, you have the power to change your money life and your relationship with money. I always say if I did it, and I'm con and don't think that it's a one-time thing, right? You're constantly, it's, it's a process. Yeah. It, yeah, like your mind is a process. Your body is a process. That means it's forever changing and evolving. So be open and have a beginner's mind. Forgive yourself, have a beginner's mind, no matter how much you're making. Um, and just, just really learn the most important things in life. Money is just a tool and you're more powerful than the money. Drop the mic. Drop the mic, man. <laughs> that was good. That well, was we're going good. to end today's Daily Huddle on this note. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Uh, Andre, thank you for bringing what uh, you brought to the party today. Alvin, thank you for having Andre as your guest. Uh, Andre, you definitely have to clear your schedule for, for a series on that. I guarantee you people are going to eat it up. Oh, so I, we'll, I, close. I <laughs> we'll close today with our seven tenets. Uh, you know, love always. You take the money advice that you got today, you'll clear your mind to love. You'll clear your space. You can laugh out loud. You will clear your space to stress less and treat your body like the temple that it is by eating mostly plant-based. And you will give, give of a generous spirit that you are and sleep well and move your body like nobody's business. And you know what? We're adding one in honor of Dr. Monica Ogando because I'm starting to realize that if I don't check my assumptions, and this is the, 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 the final one, check your assumptions. If I don't check my assumptions, I may run <laughs> with something with a completely invalid assumption. So check your assumptions. Have a phenomenal day. Join us here tomorrow for the Daily Huddle. Tuesday is Health and Wellness Day. Your hosts, Vince Roundtree and Roland Venato will be on. They're changing lives and you are changing your life. This is our daily huddle for today. My name is Sorel Ketan. My co-founder is Giovanni Gonzalez. Peace out. Stan, Peace until blessed, tomorrow. Man. Thank you, Andre. Hey, until tomorrow. hey, hug a tree for me too, brother. And will do, man. All right. Will do. All right. Blessings. Thank you, Andre.